Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Welcome guys to our very new series where we teach you different financial markets. And right now, we're going to be focusing on the cryptocurrency market. So I want to welcome you to our very first episode in our series, the crypto series. Welcome to Crypto 101. So, ano ba tong Crypto 101? No? So, kita natin yung hype, ang daming hype with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Axie Infinity, no? So, before we go into those things, pag-uusapan natin yung series ito. But, of course, well, wherever we go somewhere, the first thing that's very important is the basics and foundation. So, welcome to Crypto 101. So, today, we're gonna be discussing the important things and foundational terminologies that you need to know when you go into the crypto space so welcome guys to crypto 101 i am raf i'll be one of your facilitators or one of your speakers one of your presenters that will be journeying with you in this crypto series brought to you by zft and trading republic so wherever you are i hope you enjoy this series and i hope you learn a lot because personally i had fun doing this and i hope you have fun listening to this as well so a little bit of background about, about myself. I've been in the crypto space ever since 2018. In this 2021, I decided to go really all out in the space. So I've been trading the markets. I've been researching. I've been playing NFT games, collecting NFT art, and all of those things. Really um, immersing myself into this space. That's why I'm really excited to share to you what is Crypto 101 all about. So let's get started. First of all, what is the crypto space right so maybe you've heard axie infinity yung mga nauso ngayon dogecoin ni elon musk bitcoin cryptocurrencies right but before we go into that a few things that you need to know right the crypto space is another financial market so like the stock market the forex market right the difference between crypto market aside from the other financial markets is that medyo bago to Right, the crypto market, if I'm not mistaken, started when Bitcoin started. So it was around 2009, if I'm not mistaken, after the financial crisis, global financial crisis, right? So, and we've seen an adoption and a rise of traders or adopters that's been going to the crypto space. So right now, it has a current value of 1.5 trillion. So it, it reached at the high of 2.4 trillion and right now it's around 1.5 trillion different use cases or utilities of the crypto space so you're gonna hear the word utility use cases so basically ito yung gamit no na mga sa crypto space kasi marinig ka may, may cryptocurrency tapos hindi na daw uso cryptocurrency crypto asset na daw siya so yan yung introduce ko sa inyo today right so first cryptocurrency we have DeFi or what we call decentralized finance so if we're used to the um if we're used to banking, right? So that's called centralized finance. But here in the cryptocurrency space or crypto space, what we generally use is DeFi, decentralized finance. So we use it as for money transfers. For example, as you can see, we have Dogecoin, we have BNB, we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have um, Binance coin, right? So all of these things, we use it for money transfers. So next one is crypto assets. So stock tokens, NFT games, collectibles right all those things so what do we what do we mean by crypto assets it's because when the cryptocurrency started when bitcoin started the purpose of it was just to be a form of money transfer right the transfer of money transfer of wealth transfer of value right so when it evolves throughout the years you know um, games started to adapt it um art started to adapt um, the blockchain technology as well so the crypto um, crypto technology as well so ayan lumabas na lahat so nagkaroon na ng crypto assets whether it's stock tokens meaning ng stock tokens right so um, instead of buying shares in a company you buy stock tokens so meron dito sa Tesla so ibang ibang companies that adopts the crypto space right so meron din tayo mga NFT games meaning non-fungible games non-fungible token the games so we'll be discussing more of that in our series and then we have the collectibles whether art whether paintings whether games ngayon, cards trading cards bayan so that is why we call it crypto assets so we don't limit it as cryptocurrencies lang we also extend it not to crypto assets that's why when I introduced this to you, I didn't use the term cryptocurrency because since the space is evolving, we now call it the crypto space. All right. 
Number two, what is the blockchain? So you hear this uh, Bitcoin, ano yan, yung, yung, yung technology niyan is blockchain, blockchain. So, ano ba yun, right? So I don't, is ito sa mga very important terminologies and I'm gonna try to explain it to you as easy as possible, straightforward as possible, wala nang jargons and all of those things. So, ito lang siya, isipin niyo siya ng ganito. A blockchain is basically an online ledger or database that is verified by a network of computers. Right? So, maybe dyan, may mga tech, um, yung mga mas techy pa sa akin, right? May mas madami pang, mas, may mas complex pang description yung blockchain, right? But, in a simpler term, in, 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 in its simplest form, right? It's basically a ledger. So, yan, di ba sa mga banko, like, you use a ledger to balance things out, right? Right? To balance transaction out. So, basically, that is it. In a database, you need to make sure that the data is correct. So, that ledger and that database is basically verified by a network of computers. And those network of computers gets rewarded by the blockchain, depending on the blockchain. So, for example, it's a Bitcoin blockchain. It's an Ethereum blockchain. It's a BNB blockchain, right? So, they get the rewarded. If you're verifying that ledger, you get rewarded by that certain coin. So, yan sinasabi, di ba? Bitcoin miners, Ethereum miners. So, dun siya nang gagaling because these computers get rewarded for verifying that ledger or database. So, to give you a more deeper analogy or something that you experience day to day, for example, on the left, right? You see a clearing house, you see banks, right? And then on the right, you have the blockchain technology. So, focus muna tayo on the left. As you can see, diba, it's centralized. So, on the left, it's a centralized finance kind of thing, right? So, for example, nasa banko ka, diba? Um, Magbabank transfer ka sa BDO, tapos bank transfer ka to BPI. So, usually, those two banks has a ledger that, yun nga, parang clearing house or a centralized ledger na parang verify nila, oh, si Raf, si Raf ba meron, sa, meron siyang gantong amount so that he can transfer to my bank. Tapos i-verify ni bank, oh, sige, allow mo yung transaction na yan. Tapos i-record nila sa ledger nila. So, do, parang dumadaan yung pera mo sa isang middleman, right? Or yung clearing house or basically the centralized ledger nga. And the blockchain... It's a different thing, right? It's a it's a decentralized ledger. So it's verified by a network of computers. So for example, ikaw, yung viewer transferred money to me. Sa akin, kay Raf, no? So if you transferred, let's say, one Bitcoin to me, so that will be verified by a network of computers. And then mag sila, okay, okay, tama yung transaction na yan. And then once it is verified, it is then locked into the certain block. So, madaming blocks yan. Yung mga blocks na yun cannot be changed anymore. Permanent na sila into, into the blockchain. Kaya nga blockchain. Kasi series of blocks sila. No? Basically, yung mga blocks na yun, yun yung mga verified transactions na into the blockchain. So, ayun siya. No? So, just to give you a recap, yun yung basically yung difference niya. Centralized finance, you have parang a middleman or you have the banks verifying the transactions for you. They hold the ledger. And then, private ito, di ba? Usually, you can't see the ledger, banks na nakakita. But, in the decentralized finance, right? In, in, in any other network, whether in Bitcoin, Ethereum, it's decentralized and you can get to see the ledger itself, the transactions that's in the blockchain, right? So, when it means, when you hear the word blockchain, hindi lang siya basta Bitcoin, right? So, basta... Um, coin siya which will be we will be discussing later basta coin siya meron yan certain blockchain alright so number 3 let's talk about bitcoin right so I'll give you an excerpt na came from the bitcoin white paper right so bitcoin uses peer-to-peer -peer technology to operate with no central authority parang yung pinakita ko kanina managing transaction and the issuing of bitcoins is carried out collectively by the network. So, issuing of bitcoins, yan yung reward sa mga nag-verify or, or nag-mine nung sa blockchain. So, bitcoin is an open source. It's designed as public. Nobody owns or controls bitcoin, kaya nga siya naging decentralized, right? Bitcoin and everyone can take part. Through many of its unique properties, bitcoin allows existing uses that could not be covered by any previous payment system, which is the traditional banking system, right? So, this came from the Bitcoin white paper. What do what do I mean by white paper? Usually in the crypto space, kada project, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Dogecoin, whether it's Axie Infinity, meron yung kanyang kanyang white paper. So yung white paper yung parang resume ng coin or yung token or yung project, right? Ito yung parang about us, 
talking about me. So, diyan lahat yung details ng project, yung um, tokenomics niya or yung economics nung, um, nung um, coin or token or yung mismong utility niya or use case, right? So, why Bitcoin? Why do we hear it always? Why is it important? Why does it matter in the crypto space? Very simple. Because it's the first ever cryptocurrency. It's the pioneer of the blockchain technology around the world, right? And then, it is the highest valued crypto asset. So some use it as a store of value. Some use it as a form of transaction payment. Right? So kanya-kanyang trip yan kung anong gamit ng tao, kanya-kanyang belief yan. At the end of the day, financial markets naman, it is valued by the people. Right? So kung anong voted na majority or kung anong gamit ng majority, at the end of the day, usually yun talaga yung nagiging gamit ng Bitcoin. So usually some people nga again use it as a store of value or they use it for transactions. So what about the rest, right? You you keep hearing me Dogecoin, Axie Infinity, right? Ethereum. So, yung mga yon, these are what we call altcoins or alternative coins, diba? So we have like ETH, like Ethereum. We have Dogecoin. We have XRP. We have AXS or Axie Infinity Shard, right? So we call them alternative coins. Um, altcoins or alternative coins they have different crypto utilities for example ethereum has a different um utility compared to bitcoin dogecoin is the same thing xrp is the same thing axs yung utility niya is mainly on gaming right so iba iba siya so some are coins and some are tokens so ano yung difference ng dalawang yun pag-uusapan natin yan later kasi this is really important kasi since ang daming dami nang lumalabas sa crypto space you need to know this basic and foundational terminologies Right, so number five, coins versus tokens. So coins, they have their own blockchain and ecosystem. For example, Bitcoin has its own blockchain. Ethereum has its own blockchain and ecosystem. Solana and Binance Coin. So what do we, alam nyo na blockchain, right? So what do I mean by ecosystem? Ecosystem naman, ito yung meron ng decentralized exchange, meron na siyang mga laro, meron na siyang mga liquidity pool earnings, staking earnings. So lahat ng yan, pag-uusapan natin in our next videos. Okay, tokens naman. Ano itong mga tokens? So, tokens are basically dependent on coins. They are integrated with the blockchain. For example, AXS is a token that is dependent on the Ethereum network. Right? So, SLP is a token that is dependent on the Ethereum network as well. So, if for... um yung mga usually mga games mga end game tokens they are kaya nga silang to hindi sila end game coins they're end game tokens is because they are dependent again with a certain blockchain some are listed on the Binance some are chain network some are Ethereum or some are Solana so depende yan kaya nagiging ecosystem yung mga ibang coins right so i hope that's clear coins versus tokens so usually yung coins talaga yung mga may malalaking market cap yung tokens yung medyo malak may mga iba mga lalaki like Axie Infinity but usually coins are really bigger compared to tokens the next of crypto episodes so we're gonna stop there kasi I know medyo madami yun we talked about the blockchain we talked about the crypto space we talked about coins versus tokens we talked about the different utilities right so I'm gonna stop there and in the next episodes of our crypto series right you're gonna be learning about um, staking you're gonna be learning about paano ba kumita dito you're gonna learn about the NFT games NFT art and so much more so I don't wanna overwhelm you and i don't want to get too ahead of myself so i hope you enjoyed and you learned a lot from this video because at the end of the day at the end of the day what's important you get to know the basics and really um kaya nyo siyang explain kaya it's a three-year-old right because it's very simple but it can be complex when you make it complex so right now our purpose our goal is to make it simple as possible and for you to start your crypto journey of course, especially with risk by then. So again, thank you so much, guys. This is Raf, and I hope you learned and enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next episodes. Good luck, and just message me if you have any questions. Bye, guys!